السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن احتدى بهديه واقتدى بسنته إلى يوم الدين وبعد فقد قال جل وعلا في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حول لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من أهل بحج أو عمرة من مسجد أقصى إلى المسجد الحرام وجبت له الجنة أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Respected, honored scholars, ulama, elders, beloved brothers, there is no stage in the life of a human being, and in particular in the life of a believer, where a person could become complacent in their progress and their achievement. In essence, the effort to better ourselves, to improve ourselves is unending. It's a lifelong effort. Allah Ta'ala says, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Continue worshipping Allah until death overtakes you. And really speaking, when we study the teachings of Islam, we have entered into the blessed month of Rajab, and generally in this month across the globe, towards the latter part of this month, Normally we speak about the great journey, perhaps the greatest journey of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that was the journey of Isra wal Mi'raj. The topic that has been given to me for discussion, you know, really to encapsulate that topic in 20 minutes, we cannot do justice. But just one or two snippets, just as an appetizer, and my brothers at the very outset, I implore each and every one of you, those of us who have traveled the world, Perhaps you have been to the most exotic destination on the globe. But that piece of ground, that what did my Nabi say towards the latter part of his life as he was leaving this world? Tuba li sham, tuba li sham. Allahumma barik lana fi shamina. Glad tidings to the land of Sham. Glad tidings to the land of Sham. Why? The Malaika, the angels, the celestial creation of Allah, they spread their wings, they spread their wings. In fact, the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we studied the last moments of the life of the Nabi of Allah, Nabi alayhi salam literally implored the Sahaba that go to Masjid al-Aqsa, go to the land of Sham and perform salah in that land. In fact, there is an animation on the teacher of Imam Shafi'i, Muhammad bin Idris al-Shafi'i, Waqi'ah, multiple times he went to Masjid al-Aqsa to perform salah just to get the reward of it. What reward we are speaking about? When Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam, when he built Masjid al-Aqsa, at that moment he made three duas to the Almighty Allah. The first dua he made was, that O oh, Allah bless me with wisdom. O oh, may Allah bless me with wisdom. Number two, he said, O oh, may Allah bless me with, with the ownership of the entire world. Rabbi habli mulka la yambaghi li ahadim min ba'di. That O oh, may Allah bless me with the ownership of the entire world. He said those two du'as, I am optim, those two du'as Allah had accepted. What was the third dua that this great Nabi of Allah made, Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam? That any person who comes to Baytul Muqaddas, to Masjid al-Aqsa, to the land of Sham, to offer salah, O oh Allah, let him return from this journey like the day his mother had given birth to him. Like the day his mother had given birth to him. And in one narration, what did my Nabi say? Man ahalla bi hajjin aw umratim min masjid aqsa ila al masjid al haram wajabat lahu al jannah. That person who dons the haram for either hajj or umrah, wa masjid al aqsa, and thereafter you proceed to Mecca to perform the salah, to perform hajj or umrah for masjid al aqsa. My Nabi said, one narration, jannah. 
jannah becomes compulsory for you one narration says allah taala will will return you like the day your mother had given birth to you one day the nabi of allah is sitting and the sahaba discussing amongst themselves that which is more virtuous masjid an nabawi or masjid al aqsa the nabi of allah overheard this discussion he said indeed what you are saying is correct allah has added virtue to medina because of my presence but what did my nabi say masjid al aqsa the land of sham is a brilliant place and then he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam close to qiyama close to qiyama if allah has given you the means to purchase a piece of land to purchase a piece of land he said do it why this is the land of hashar wal mahshar this is the land of gathering this is the only piece of ground on mother earth when we look at the virtue of makka makka has its own virtue Medina Munawwara has its own virtue. Masjid Al Aqsa is the only piece of ground on the entire Mother Earth where every Nabi of Allah had gathered on that piece of ground. Nabi Ali Salam, when he went on the journey of Miraj, where did he go from? Isra from Mecca to Masjid Al Aqsa. The journey of Miraj from Masjid Al Aqsa, he ascended to the seven heavens. He said, "Jibril, help me by my hand." the burak was tied jibril held me by my hand and he said oh muhammad i have traveled the earth north to south east to west amazing narration siratul anbiya ana nabiyul anbiya i am the nabi of all the anbiya my brothers and my sisters when we study our history the nabi of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he prophesized the conquest of baitul muqaddas let me just give you an insight into uh, you know this incident when sayyidina umar bin khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda when sayyidina abu bakr had passed on this happened when the battle of yarmouk when the muslims were victorious in yarmouk so abu ubaida ibn jarrah this great sahabi He sends a message to Masjid al-Nabawi to Sayyidina Umar, Amir al-Mu'minin, that we have captured. In the time of Sayyidina Umar, scholars have written, Umar was a visionary. He had conquered nothing less than 2,200,000 square miles. He conquered the land of Sham, Damascus, Egypt, Lebanon, Palestine, Afghanistan, parts of Pakistan, 2,200,000 square miles. Then comes the conquest of Jerusalem, Baitul Muqaddas. Abu Ubaida ibn Jarrah, they come to Ariha. Today is commonly known as Jericho. That is the oldest city in the world. Jericho, Ariha, the oldest city in the world. the patriarch of jerusalem whose name was sofranus he comes to meet abu ubaida ibn jarrah so abu ubaida ibn jarrah he says hand the keys of baitul muqaddas you know to me what period of time do the muslims camp around baitul muqaddas no bloodshed no fighting four consecutive months sofranus the patriarch of jerusalem He tells Abu Ubaida ibn Jarrah, "I will not hand the keys over to you, but I will hand the keys over to the Caliph, who is in the capital Medina. We've read about him in our divine scriptures. He will be a man of high ethics and morals, and he will be wearing patch clothes. Long story short, so Shurahbil bin Hasana." tells Abu Ubaida ibn Jarrah why are we delaying the matter let us conquer Baitul Muqaddas Abu Ubaida ibn Jarrah sends a letter to Amir al-Mu'minin Umar bin Khattab Umar was in Medina and he receives this letter that the patriarch of Jerusalem Sofranus is prepared to hand the keys over to you and no one else who were the consultants of Umar contrary to propaganda Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he calls Usman bin Affan and he calls Ali bin Abi Talib he said Usman what is your opinion 
Usman says, remain in Medina. This is the capital. They have a sinister motive, a hidden agenda. He said, Ali, what is your opinion? Like I said, contrary to propaganda, Ali bin Abi Talib was the personal advisor to Umar bin Khattab. So Ali bin Abi Talib says, my opinion is, the Nabi of Allah had prophesied the conquest of Jerusalem before leaving this world. What did the Nabi of Allah say? He said, I remind you about six things. One is my demise. Number two, the conquest of Jerusalem. Ali bin Abi Talib, he said, Amirul Mu'mineen, go and receive the keys. How many times did Omar leave Medina Munawwara? How much do we know our history? Omar radiallahu ta'ala anhu in his entire life, he left Medina Munawwara only on one occasion. He had profound love for Medina. This was the only journey that he had undertaken to the land of Sham in his entire life. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ali bin Abi Talib tells him, why don't you take an army with you? He says, no. He said, I will take one of my servants and he's going to receive the keys of Baytul Muqaddas. He's got his camel and he's got his servant. And they leave from Medina Munawwara. Fast forward this incident, Omar tells his servant that we will share this animal. I will ride 50% of the journey and you ride half the journey. That was the justice of Omar. That was the justice of Omar. Omar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was bald. He never wore a turban. The clothing that he was wearing was a white woolen garment with 17 patches on it. And he's going to conquer Baytul Muqaddas. 17 patches, Amirul Mu'mineen, Umar bin Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda. As they are moving, the night they are about to arrive in Jerusalem. Allahu Akbar. They come to the, you know, today it's famously known as the Golden Heights. Golden Heights, they come to that area. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it was the turn of his servant to ride the camel. So the servant tells Umar, I forfeit my right. He says that, no, no, it is your turn. You will ride the camel and we will enter Jerusalem. I will hold the reins to the camel. The servant is sitting on the camel and Omar, Omar is holding the reins. And, you know, historians have written, as they're about to enter, they come to this place, the Golden Heights. And Omar falls into a puddle of water. So one is, he's wearing torn and tattered clothes with 17 patches on it and he falls into a puddle of water. Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah, he comes to meet Omar. What a moment this must have been. Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah, he comes to meet Omar ibn Khattab. He looks at him and he said, Amirul Mu'mineen, Amirul Mu'mineen. Perhaps he was justified in what he's saying. You cannot be dressed in this manner. You're going to receive the, the keys of Jerusalem. So Omar radiallahu ta'ala anhu at that moment, he mentioned those legendary words. What did he say? Nahnu qawmun Allahu bil Islam. We are such a nation, Allah has given us honor and respect through Islam. If you will search for honor and dignity in anything other than Islam, Allah will disgrace you. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he tells Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah, let me visit your home. Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah says, Omar, if you visit my home, you will cry. He said, no, I would like to visit you. And when he enters, not the home, the tent of Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah, Omar looked at Abu Ubaidah and he said, this is how you live, absolutely nothing. The conqueror of, of Jerusalem, Omar bin Khattab, his eyes welled up with tears. And he said, let us go. Brothers, we don't have time. Let me bring you to the uh, Allahu Akbar. So Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah, he takes Umar bin Khattab to the patriarch of Jerusalem. And they meet each other. And then he takes him on a guided tour. He takes him on a guided tour. What I'm trying to show you, the justice of Omar. The first place that he takes him to 
is the holiest place in Christian history, which is known as Kanisatul Qiyama, the holy sepulchre. The, the, the holiest place in Christian history and Christianity is the holy sepulchre. It was the time of Zohar Salah. So Sofranus tells Omar, why don't you pray in the church? Did Omar tell him, you know what, this is all kufar and disbelief and you like this and you like that? Like what happens in today's time? Look at the justice of Omar. He said, if I pray in the church, down the line, the Muslims will lay claim to this church and they will convert it into a masjid. And they will say, because Omar prayed in the church, you know, we will also pray in the church. Omar said that, no, no. What does he do? He steps outside the church and he read salah a few meters away from the church. And today when you go there, a masjid has been established by the name of Masjid Omar. Allahu Akbar. Masjid Omar. Sofranus the patriarch. He gives the keys of the church to Omar bin Khattab. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, who is the most prominent family living in Jerusalem? So somebody tells him, Kaab al-Ahbar was a Jewish rabbi. He said, Al-Nusaybah, Al-Nusaybah. So he said, who is the head of this family? One person steps forward. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu takes the keys of this church and gives it to this man from the family of Nusaybah. Like the Nabi of Allah had given the keys of the Kaaba to the Banu Shaybi. And he said the keys of the Kaaba will remain in that family right up to the day of Qiyamah. Like that Sayyidina Umar, he takes the keys of this church and he gives it to Al Nusaybah. And he said the keys of this church will remain in this family right up to the day of Qiyamah. Up to this day, there is a man by the name of Adib Judah. Adib Judah, who is a Muslim, who holds the keys to this church. Every morning he opens the church and closes the church. A Muslim. Then came the time of Salah. My word, my word. Really, my brothers, the Nabi of Allah, he met the Anbiya. Omar met the Sahaba. Remember, it's years down the line. Omar is 60 years plus of age. Who does he meet? Bilal ibn Rabah, Sharhbil bin Hassana, Khalid bin Walid, and the galaxy of Sahaba. Galaxy of Sahaba. So Omar radiallahu ta'ala, it was the time of Zuhar Salah. He tells Bilal, Bilal, call out the Adhan, call out the Adhan. Very modestly, he looks at Omar. And he said, Laqad ala nafsi. After my Nabi left this world, I had taken a vow. I would never call out the Adhan again. Bilal ibn Rabah, after the Nabi of Allah passed away, he left from Medina Munawwara, he settled in the land of Sham. Allahu Akbar. So Omar looks at him and he said, if the Nabi of Allah was present today, he would have requested you to call out the Adhan and the words of Omar, Innahu yufrihu Rasul Allah. I swear by Allah, O oh Bilal, call out the Adhan. This will make the Nabi of Allah so happy. The first Mu'addin of Makkah, the first Mu'addin of Medina, the first Mu'addin of Baytul Muqaddas, Bilal ibn Rabah. What did my Nabi say on the day of Qiyamah? I will be the first to stand from my grave. Thereafter, Abu Bakr and Omar, and then Sayyidina Bilal ibn Rabah will stand up and he will call out the Adhan on the day of Qiyamah. Then comes the time of Zuhar Salah. Time of Zuhar Salah. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he asked Kaab al-Ahbar, that tell me where did the Nabi of Allah perform Salah when he led the Anbiya on the, prior to ascending on the journey of Mi'raj? So he indicated to a certain place. So Umar said that, no, no, this is not the place that my Nabi had described to us. They come to, the, they come to an area and it was a dumpster, it was a dump. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he goes on his knees with the galaxy of Sahaba and they clean this piece of ground. They clean this piece of ground. 
And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu leads the Sahaba in Salah. Like the Nabi of Allah led the Anbiya in Salah. Umar bin Khattab leads the Sahaba in Salah. He read the Dhuhr Salah, Asr Salah. When he came to the time of Maghrib, what surahs did Umar read in the Salah? What surahs did he read? In the first rakat, he read Surah Saad, which is in the 23rd juz of Quran. And in the second rakat, he read Surah Bani Israel, Subhan alladhi asra bi'abdi laylam min al-masjid al-haram. And then the patriarch of Jerusalem. You know, they signed some paperwork. He's handing over the keys of Jerusalem to Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This is a topic on its own. Shurutul Umuriyah. Shurutul Umuriyah. You know the pact that Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu had drawn up with the patriarch of Jerusalem that we will not touch your churches. Nobody will be killed unjustly. And a host of uh, uh, amazing, you know, this is a topic on its own. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he goes on a guided tour. He goes on a guided tour. Brothers, my time is up. Just in conclusion, I leave you with one or two incidents from the books of Ahadith. If you open Muslim Sharif, the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, every Anbiya, every Nabi of Allah, he desired to be at Baytul Muqaddas in Jerusalem. The sanctity of Makkah dates back to the time of Ibrahim salam and the Prophet of Allah wasallam. The sanctity of Jerusalem and the land of Sham is synonymous to every Nabi of Allah. Every Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did my Nabi say? You will not find the space of four fingers. Except that one Nabi of Allah prostrated on the ground. Except a Nabi of Allah prostrated on the ground. Nabi Musa alayhi salam enters into the latter part of his life. And we all know when it comes to Anbiya, Allah Ta'ala informs them via Jibreel that your time has come to go. It comes in one narration when the angel of death comes to take the life of Musa alayhi salam. Open Muslim, you will find the narration. So Musa alayhi salam gave the angel of death one slap. And the eye of Malakul Maud falls out. And he goes back to the Almighty Allah. And the angel of death tells the Nabi, tells Allah, Arsaltani ila abdin la yuridul maud. That, O oh, Allah, you have sent me to such a man who doesn't wish to die. Allah Ta'ala tells the angel of death, go back to Musa and make the proposal to him. Tell him to place his hand on the back of a black ox, a black cow. And how many strands of hair his hand will cover, I will prolong his life by that much. The angel of death comes. I guess if that proposal was given to you and I, we would have put both our hands. No man wants to die. So Musa salam asked the angel of death, what would happen after that? The angel of death said, eventually you will die. Musa salam turns to Allah. He said, oh me Allah, as we know, Musa salam never entered the blessed land. He said, oh me Allah, show me, I can get a glimpse of the blessed land. Musa salam was leaning on, leaning on his staff and looking at the land of Baytul Muqaddas, and in that condition, he passes away. What did my Nabi say? If I was there, I would have shown you the grave of Musa at the bottom of the Red Sand Hills. This great Nabi of Allah. My brothers, my message to you is, there's much more. Time of Jummah is not sufficient. Much more we could have shared with you. Let us, each and every one of us, make this niya. If Allah has given us the means, let us travel to Baytul Muqaddas. Let us all say, inshallah. Generally, when it comes to the Cape Town community, and rightfully so, you are very passionate about the cry of the Palestinian Ummah. I read an article not too long ago. They say 95% of the children of Palestine have seen the massacre of a near and dear one in front of their eyes. Maymuna, Maymuna, she said, O oh, Nabi of Allah, if you cannot travel to Baytul Muqaddas, what did my Nabi say? Send oil, send oil, so they could light the lanterns of Al-Aqsa. Al Mubarak. My brothers, I implore each and every one of you, spare a thought. 
You know, we know what happens when these atrocities meted out, then, you know, there's you and cry globally. But every day of our lives, make this, make this dua, pick up our hands for one moment, for one minute, and make dua for the liberation of Al-Aqsa. Salahuddin al-Ayyubi. You know, when somebody asked him, why don't you smile? He said, how can I smile when Masjid Al-Aqsa has not yet been liberated? We make dua to the Almighty Allah. Allah Ta'ala reward those who are standing firm to protect Masjid Al-Aqsa. Allah Ta'ala grant us the ability, you know, that we stand. Like I said, brothers, it's not only your money. Go and visit this land. My Nabi said, like I mentioned in the beginning, and I leave you with these words, that that person will go to Baytul Muqaddas with this intention of performing two rakats of salah and then you return from this journey you will return from this journey like the day your mothers had given birth to you we make dua to the almighty allah allah grant us the ability that we infuse we internalize these amazing advices of quran and sunnah and i would just like to take this opportunity of thanking our respected sheikh abdul rahman and the trustees of masjid al-aqsa for always welcoming me home you know really this is i always say this is like my home uh, you know always with open hearts and then, you know, open hands. Allah Ta'ala bless each and every one of you. Allah, Allah protect each and every one of us. Wa ma'alayna illa al-balagh. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.